Hello everybody, I'm Tim. We're back once again. I work for Golf Cart Garage. I am uh, a member of the Gearheads on Demand service that Golf Cart Garage offers. That service involves a system where you can schedule an appointment with me where I will call. I'll call a schedule a phone call with me and our, I, you can schedule a video session with me also. You, if you're interested in that, click on the description in, at the bottom here and that will take you to the scheduling page where you can fill out a little bit of information and you pick a, a time that's convenient for you. It's all automatic. I'll call you at that time and we can discuss your golf cart issue. I might be able to help you. I might have seen it before. Might be able to save you some money from a, a golf cart shop repair bill or something like that. You know, just to, or just give you steer you in the right direction on your project, whatever it is you're you're trying to accomplish. You can also schedule a video session where I will send a link to your phone and you just click the link and I'll be there and I can see what you're pointing at. I can I can see through your camera on your phone. I'll be able to see your project if, in case it's something you think you might need to show me. This is, we are live right now on Facebook and YouTube. This is Thursday, September the 15th. Uh, this is noon noon central time. I, come, I go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 o'clock noon central time. So just remember Tim, Tuesday, Thursday, all T's, T-T-T, Tim, Tuesday, Thursdays. And it's at noon central time. This is this episode that we're doing right now. We're going to answer a few questions and maybe interact with some people in the live. Anybody watching in the live, feel free to participate. Uh, this is episode number 56. So we, this is the 56th time we've done that. That's a lot of questions. So let's see. The garage is now open, so let's get started. Question number one. I have a 2004 EasyGo Gas TXT that when I bought it, it had a Jake's lift kit installed on it. I installed new heavy duty shocks all around and the steering shaft that goes into the, the spleen gear, I think it means spline gear, pops out sometimes over bumps. What can I do to fix this issue? Well, generally, uh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about your steering rod is in a gear that has a, a little bit of slack in it for when your shocks go up and down. The rod has, has a place to go. Uh, generally, Jake's is really good about uh, their lift kits uh, compensating for any kind of things like this that may come up. So my question would be, are your new heavy-duty shocks that you put on, are they longer than your old shocks? Because that would would cause that. That would cause that steering shaft to be a little bit further out and that that could cause your issue. So uh, you might ought to might check that and if they are then put your other ones back on and see if that uh, in just the front put your other shocks back on in the front and see if that corrects your issue. But that would be the only thing I could think of there is that those shocks must be longer. Number two I have an older club car that seems to stutter when starting to move. What causes this? Uh, I know I've said this before on, on several uh, previous episodes. Anytime a customer would come into my shop and they would describe uh, their symptom in their electric car as a stutter or a shutter, it is almost always, almost always battery related. And doesn't necessarily mean a bad battery, but it can mean a bad battery or a low a battery that's weaker than the rest. You got to understand your golf cart needs all six of the batteries to work in order for it to work correctly. If only one battery doesn't work, you you, you think oh there's six of them in there my golf cart's going to be fine with five even if it's, even if numbers even if six nope it's not it's going to shudder or stutter even if just one battery in fact if even just one cell you know how you got the water fill holes in the top of your battery in a 36 volt car you got three water fill holes in the top of the, each battery in a 48 volt car you got four water fill holes in the top of each battery each one of those holes is actually a two volt battery a lot of people don't realize that. It's a two volt battery. If just one of those cells, one of those two volt cells drops out, it can cause a shutter or a stutter. So think about how, you know, add up how many holes you got there. You got, uh, in, in a, 
there's, there's, there's several places that you could have a sail drop out and it could cause a shutter or a stutter. So I'd want to eliminate the batteries first. Another thing that can cause it, that's why I say battery related, but not necessarily battery. It's another thing that can cause a shutter or a stutter is a bad cable. You could have a bad cable that's just uh, corroded so to the point where it's barely hanging on or it's heating up to the point, caused a loose connection. And it, every time you try to take off, it's having trouble passing the amount of amps through it that, you know, to allow your cart to roll. That can cause a shutter or a stutter also. But usually it's a battery. So I would be checking on that first. I always check on the batteries first. Number three. Before I go to number three, I'm going to go to Facebook real quick because it looks like we got James Brown the third over on Facebook. What's up, James Brown the third? I have a gas power 2002 DS and getting 19 miles per hour. How can I get more? On a, on a gas car, there's what the depends on how much more you want to get that this is what i always tell people on a gas car there's there's really two levels of increasing your speed on a gas car uh because and i say that because i don't like to tamper with the governor and if you're getting 19 that means your governor is pretty tweaked right where it should be i wouldn't tamper with it because if you're already getting 19 that's good that's a good spot so just leave it right there the first level of getting a more speed in a in a gas golf cart is just go to a high speed gear set in the rear end. Leave the governor where it's at, go to a high speed gear or a higher speed gear set. You don't have to go all the way. I think there's three gear sets available. You, it would be stock, a little bit higher, and then a lot higher. You know, you could, so if you're not worried about losing any type of uh, torque, then go to the highest one and that will be your best increase in speed. Uh, that's the first level of increasing in speed. Now, if you want to go all out, then they have, there, there are conversion kits available from uh, all over the place. There's different, different companies that have conversion kits that includes an entire motor swap. I mean, that you just pull your motor out and the cradle and everything, and you put a motor swap in there. You, it changes to a, you know, your golf cart probably has like a 13 horsepower motor. You can put 22 horsepower motor in there in, in, with these conversion kits. So that's the next level after that, you know, of speed. So in, if you're just looking for 19, you're at 19 now and you're looking to go about 25, something like that, 25 to 30 in that range, then get a high speed gear set and, and that it'd be done. Then you want, then you know, your car is going to run exactly the same. Your clutches do a good job of compensating for the, for the loss of torque, uh, for the higher gear set. James says 22 to 25. James Brown the third. Hmm. Are you kin to the to the real James Brown? I wonder. Let's see. Let's see. Where was I at? Number three. My 2017 Easy Go Express L6 golf cart has a drivetrain problem. The electric motor runs but torque isn't transmitted to the rear tires. If I jack the car up and lift the tires off the ground, the rear tires will turn, but can be stopped by merely holding the tire with my hand. Is there a drivetrain component that typically fails causing these symptoms to occur? Thank you, Bob. That's number three. James says, LOL, I wish. <laughs> when I ask him about being kin to the to the real James Brown. Yep. I, I hear you. All right. On number three. Now, let me tell you this. It is normal. If you put a, if you jack up the rear of a golf cart, it is normal. You know, you get the tires off the ground. You can hold one tire and stop it and the other one will spin. And then you can go around to the other side and hold that one tire and stop it with your hands and the, and the other tire will spin. That is normal. It's because you have an open rear end. It's, it's designed that way so they, you won't tear up grass or anything when you're riding around on a golf course. Now, <clears throat> what you were talking about when it's on the ground and you said that the, you can hear the motor running but the, it's not transmitting power to the wheels, it's not going. If, if you can actually hear the motor spinning and it's not going, that means both wheels are stopped and something is turning. 
All right, so in that case, I would, I would suspect that you have done what we call, you've spun a hub, like a, your, your brake hubs are on a splined axle shaft and you've stripped out the hub. So the way to check that is uh, go ahead and put it on the ground. If you have a wheel cover or something on, on a hub cap on your wearing, take it off so you can see the axle nut. You just take everything off you need to in order to be able to see the axle nut. Then put it in forward, turn the key on, and touch the gas pedal and watch if you see if that axle nut is spinning. And then check that side and then go to the other side and check the other side. If you if you see that axle spinning and the wheel's not turning, then that's exactly what you've done. You've stripped a hub. That's fairly common in certain types of cars. Okay. Number four is where we're at. Oh, let me check YouTube. I don't see anybody in YouTube there. All right. Now we'll go back to number four. Number four. Charger only shows a few amps when connected. Batteries are between 6.1 and 6.18, 6.14 and 6.18. Terminals are clean. Clean the plug-in assembly. Charger works on other TXT cards, 36 volt car. What do I need to do next? Uh, the first thing that I would want to do, I would want to verify that your charging receptacle wires are hooked to the to the correct spots uh, and one way to do this is to get your get your voltmeter and put your leads of your voltmeter inside the charging receptacle like put your voltmeter on a if you said it's a 36 volt car so put it on a 200 volt scale and put one lead in one side of the charging receptacle, put one lead in the others. You should get full battery pack voltage right there at that spot. If you're not, then your leads are in the wrong place on your batteries. So, and that could cause your, uh, your charger to act funny. If it's acting fine on another cart and it's not acting fine on your cart, there's only two places that could be wrong. It could either be your charging receptacle, like you said that you said you cleaned, Actually, three places. Your charging receptacle, your charging receptacle wires are in the wrong place, or you got something wrong with your batteries, you know, one or the other. Let's see there. Number five. This is from Philip. My Yamaha G1 golf cart, no matter which way I turn the key, it goes in reverse. Change the solenoid, but it still does the same thing. Do I need to change the ignition switch? Well, on a Yamaha G1 gas, if I, and I'm assuming we're talking about gas, uh, a gas golf cart here. I have one, and that's how you change it. That's how you change from forward to reverse is with the key. You, t you turn it to the right, and you're in forward. You turn it to the left, and it reverse buzzer comes on, and, and it goes backwards. The engine actually spins backwards. Now, the way that this is accomplished is with reversing solenoids. Plural, two. There's two solenoids. You said you changed the solenoid. Well, a G1 gas has two solenoids. Uh, supposed to. I mean, are you sure it's not modified in some way? If it, if it, if it only has one solenoid, it's, it's been modified in some way, or the, the forward solenoid is missing. And maybe that's why it's not going forward. But if you've got both solenoids and they're both working correctly, then you should have forward and reverse because that makes the motor spin backwards. The, the, there's not a transmission in a Yamaha G1 gas. The engine literally cranks in reverse. When it spins backwards and it and will crank in forward. It'll crank in forward and crank in reverse. And that's how you get your forward and reverse. So the fact that you said you changed the solenoid, it's got me questioning that because it's supposed to have two solenoids and they're right beside each other. Number six, this is from Scott. I'm constantly getting an abnormal charging cycle with my Yamaha charger. I'm guessing I need a new charger. Last year, a Navitas motor and controller were installed, but it did not fix how the cart charges. 
Yeah, motor and controller is not going to change the charging issue. Uh, you could have, there's, there's not very many components involved in that charger, and I know what you mean by abnormal charge. It's got a little yellow light on that particular charger that says abnormal charge cycle. I have found in the past that if sometimes when that happens, if you'll do it again, it will it'll go through a normal charge cycle. It's got some kind of safety thing in there that it's registering some type of fault that's causing that to come on if everything's working properly and if your batteries are, are working properly. So this is one of those times when I really would like for you to take that charger and put it on someone else's Yamaha and just verify there's nothing wrong with that charger first. Make sure that it doesn't come up abnormal charge cycle on, on someone else's cart too. And then we could concentrate on the inside of the charger. It might just need a new circuit board and uh, you know that would clear that up. But if it works fine on someone else's cart, then you got a battery issue going on most likely with yours. But I know it's not always hard, it's not always easy to find another person's golf cart that accepts the same, that's a very common Yamaha. You're just gonna have to find a Yamaha somewhere and to, to try to verify that that charger is fine. That was number six. Let's go over here. That looks good on Facebook. And we got Kurt Bauer in on YouTube. What's up, Kurt Bauer? Hey, Tim, on a Lester Summit 2, what happens when after it shows 100% charge, why does it continue to charge on phase four? Well, I would want you to verify what what it's doing on phase four uh, with a voltmeter. Uh, I mean, are you saying, you gotta understand, it's not going to go to the storage mode function. I don't even know how much time it takes for the Summit 2 to go into the storage mode function. And that's where it's literally gonna shut off and, and then come back on, you know, occasionally. Uh, I don't remember, I'd have to look in the manual somewhere where it talks about that. But you're, your golf cart voltage, full voltage, is going to get up to over 60 volts probably. If you're talking about a 48 volt car, that Summit 2 could be used on 36 volt car also. And if that's the case, it could get up to over, it could get up to about 48 volts uh, before it, you know, decides to switch to the storage mode function. Uh, so it, I'd want to verify that it is still going full blast, you know, at 100% charge at, on on phase four uh, with a, with a voltmeter. You know, what kind of what kind of readings are you getting? Uh, where you, when you think it should be shutting off. Let's see here. Number seven is where I was at. I was trying to figure out where I left off. Number seven. Looking to change the backup buzzer to music on my 2018 Yamaha golf cart. Is it possible? <laughs> well, you get the prize for, for today because that's another first. I've never had anyone ask me that question and that doesn't happen very often. And then when it does happen, I like to point it out. I've never had someone request to make their reverse buzzer music. So you get the prize. Uh, if I was, if I had merchandise I could give away, I would give it to you for asking a question I've never been asked before. Now to answer your question, if, is it possible? I would think that it, anything is possible if you do enough research and throw enough money at it. So the first thing that I would want to do is like, what kind of musical device are you planning on running? Because you know, then we need to talk about what kind of voltage it runs off of the musical device that you're trying, you know, that's going to transmit the music. Then we got to figure out how much voltage is going to your reverse buzzer. Uh, so. Most people just want to eliminate the reverse buzzer. So, you know, this, this is a new one on me. So that would take some research. That would take a little bit of research, but good question though. Number eight, I'm looking to install a street legal headlight system on my cart. Before I go and purchase, I want to know if these systems will work with the 48 volt lithium ion battery. There has been concern as to how to hook up one of these units because it is a sealed battery unit. Is there any specific I need to know or to have to install one of these light kits you offer? Thanks in advance. We get, we get similar questions like this occasionally and there's there's some confusion out there 
on lithium conversions when when someone decides to do a lithium battery conversion you have to understand your golf cart you're riding around with six batteries in it you know lead acid batteries let's, let's start at the basics there your golf cart does not know that it has six batteries in it it thinks it has one 48 volt battery in it okay it that's all it knows because it's it's reading off of the positive of the first battery and the negative of the last battery. All those connections in between your golf cart has no idea about that. It thinks it's running off one 48 volt battery. When you do a lithium conversion and you put one 48 volt battery in there, it's all the same. Your golf cart doesn't know any different. It, it thinks it's running off one 48 volt battery. Well, actually the lithium battery is probably more like 51 volts or something like that. Uh, they charge up to a little bit higher voltage than lead acid will. So it's, your golf cart still thinks it's running off one battery, and it is. It's one big 48 volt battery. Now, all light kits, your, your question was about light kits, and why is, it, why is there some confusion when it comes to that? All light kits run off of 12 volts. All accessories, golf cart accessories, are usually all 12 volts. 12 volts, they run off 12 volts. Well, if you had six 8-volt batteries in your car before, there's no way you can get 12 volts there either without using a voltage reducer. You've got one big lithium battery now. There's no way you can get 12 volts on that one without using a voltage reducer. That Your new lithium battery only has two connections. It's got a positive connection, a main positive, and a main negative. Well, that's going to be the input for your voltage reducer. You've got to put a voltage reducer there. And then coming out of the voltage reducer is a usable 12 volts. Now that 12 volts can be used to power your lights, can be used to power a stereo, can be used to power any number of accessories. So that's, I hope that clears, uh, I hope that didn't add to anybody's confusion. I hope that kind of cleared up some things because we, we do get that question a lot. And I never have understood why there was confusion there. But I, I think it's something to do with going, people think they're going from six batteries to one and now they don't know what to do. They don't know how to hook up the, the 12 volt accessories. Well, it's the exact same way. You gotta use a voltage reducer. All right, let me see. We're getting close to the end, so I'm gonna check. Facebook and YouTube, looks like we're still all right there. We got one more question. Question number nine. Hello, Golf Cart Garage. I have a 2019 Club Car Precedent 48 volt golf cart. I installed one of your digital voltage display meters on it last week. My batteries are one year old. My meter will go up to 52 volts after a charge. Well, that's normal. 52 volts on a 48 volt car, fully charged 48 volt pack. That's, that's fairly normal, 52 volts. I will run the cart for eight or 10 three minute trips to the, and the meter will read 30 to 32 volts. And the cart will drop down to walking speed. And sometimes I need to push it into my garage when it hits 30 volts. <clears throat> Do I have a bad gauge or wired it incorrectly or something else? Well, you're, your battery meter is actually telling you what is wrong. I mean, you're, it's, it's telling you what is wrong. That's why you put the battery meter on there is to, to tell you the condition of your batteries. Well, first of all, you should never drop out from 48 volts or 52, whatever you said you had. It should never drop down into the 30s. Uh, it'd be very difficult to get a good set of batteries to do that. So you've got a, you, you answered your own question there. You, you have a battery dropping out. You definitely have a battery dropping out. You, your cart probably at precedent probably has four 12 volts in it, four 12 volt batteries. And you, you've got one of those 12 volt batteries is dropping out on you. As soon as you, you know, after you use the golf cart for a little bit, you say you take three to 10, three minute trips or something like that in it. Well, at the time when it drops out and goes down to 30 volts, take your, take a voltmeter on a DC scale and just put, put the, each lead on each one of your four batteries. And, and I guarantee you, one of them is going to be way less than the others. Because you, you definitely have one dropping out. Let's see. That's going to be it for the regular questions today for this week. All right. Don't forget. 
My name is Tim with Golf Cart Garage. I am a big part of the Gearheads On Demand service. Uh, if you're interested in speaking with me about a golf cart related issue uh, that I may be able to help you with, might be able to help you out and steer you in the right direction, may be able to help save you some money, click the link in the description. You can schedule a phone call with me or you can schedule a video session with me where I can take control of your phone and, and see through your camera and, and check out your golf cart and may be able to help you out that way. Uh, let's see. That's going to be about it for me. Let's see. I'll be back. I'll be back Tuesday. It's Tim Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12 o'clock noon Central Time. We go live Tuesdays and Thursdays. I want to thank everybody for participating in the in the chat. Uh, we had Kirk today, and we had James Brown the third today. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Thank everybody else for watching in the, in the live. I will be back next Tuesday. The garage is now closed.